and after weeks and weeks of waiting, I finally heard back from AOMG and I was kind of shocked when I heard this, but they said, who is this guy? <sighs> Why? Why won't you meet me, Jay? What's up guys, it's your boy Juan here. First up, I was super touched by all the encouragements that you guys gave me through the comment section as well as Instagram, and I really appreciate it guys. Like, some of your comments were so on point with what I was thinking that I was like, how did they know about this? And you know, like, I just really love our small little global K-pop community with big dreams. Regardless of how things worked out, you know, I learned so much from this event and it also got me thinking about my next steps as well. So let me first walk you guys through what went down with AOMG after and we'll get to what I'm planning on next. So let go. In my last video, I talked about me sending a business proposal to AOMG and their response to the proposal. My tone for their response was a bit exaggerated, but you know, they did say, oh, who is this person? So yeah, it's based on true story. Honestly, AOMG didn't even have to respond, but they thankfully did, and from what I heard, AOMG wasn't so hot with my proposal, but they did request more information about me, as I'm sure they got curious too. Like, they could have thought, who is this guy saying that the leading hip hop label in Korea can improve the way they communicate with global K hip hop fans? Or they could have thought, where did this chump come from, eh? Less than 15k followers? Our AOMG dog has more followers than him. I was just joking about the last part, but when I heard that AOMG requested more information about me, I created this cute little document that kind of explains who I am, as well as what my goals were with this proposition, and I sent over the documents to AOMG. For those of you guys who saw my last Q&A video, you guys will know that my background was in the tech industry instead of the entertainment world, but I did engage in a lot of business planning roles. and. I'm one of the few YouTubers that solely focus on K hip hop, so that's what I mainly emphasize to build credibility with them. And after I sent over my resume and proposition to A1G, I waited for their feedback and I did remain hopeful for the first few weeks. However, the news that Yugam from GOT7 was joining A1G later came out, and Big Naughty from Higher Music also just dropped a new album, so I knew that the two labels were super busy with everything. And when I saw some of their artists like PH1 starting a live video series with another YouTube channel, that's when I realized that, oh, perhaps AOMG Higher Music has different plans for their communication methods. While my idea was that AOMG Higher Music should create a centralized platform like Dingo Freestyle or Aided Rising to communicate deeper with their global fans, Maybe they felt more comfortable outsourcing these tasks to several different production studios rather than creating this type of communication channel and house. After all, the production studio that created the variety series for Make It Rain is also operated by CJ ENM, who owns majority share of AOMG Higher Music, so they definitely do have various options in their back pocket. At the end, my proposal to AOMG naturally fizzled out, and I was a bit sad for some time as I was very hopeful. But as the legendary Jay Park once said, even when I fall, I'll stand right back up, you feel me? And I did. Other than AOMG, I also did kind of try to reach out to the DPR crew through my connections in Korea, but they're like the mystical beings of the K-Hip-Hop scene. Like, it's super hard to get in contact with them. Like, I was informed that they tend to do things more discreetly, and they already do have a lot of investors behind them, so they don't really engage in content productions too often, you know what I mean? So yeah, after my two semi-rejections from my favorite labels slash crews, this is what I concluded. First, K-Hip-Hop labels are definitely different from a K-Pop company. I recently saw a video of Swings making a presentation during Just Music slash Indigo Music's New Year Artist Meeting, and the part point literally said, the label's direction is not to force the artists in any ways while respecting their individuality as much as they possibly can. 
This is a good thing for sure, but at the same time, this also means that it's difficult to make something happen as a label unless all the artists are on board. Partnering with a large label to consistently produce and create content is very difficult and make it rain creating a specific variety YouTube channel like Make It Want was basically a miracle in my point of view. Secondly, even if you put in a lot of work to do something, it may not necessarily always pay off. Now, does that mean we should stop trying? No, it just means that the timing wasn't right and we just gotta continue putting in that work to be ready when the right timing comes. Which brings me to my last point. After going through this process and receiving feedback from you guys, it definitely gave me more assurance to my blueprint and my vision is to become the one-stop platform for Global K Hip Hop fans. For Global K Hip Hop fans right now, you have to subscribe to many YouTube channels to get to know more about your favorite artist or label and even then, like, if they don't have subtitles for that video series, then whoops, that's it, you know? I love the contents that channels like Dingo Freestyle, Hip Hop Player, and Hip Hop Ellie puts out, but my goal is to become a mixture of the three channels that's both informative and fun. I obviously have a long way to go to make this happen, but I want my channel to become the platform where global K Hip Hop fans can always expect English as well as other language contents and really get to know the K-pop artists that they love and engage even deeper with them, you know? Now, I don't know how many international K-pop fans are out there, but I firmly believe in the potential for this to become something much bigger than it is right now. So my request to you guys is let's make this happen by introducing your friends to K-pop as well as my channel. I'm gonna continue meeting people out in Korea to make the vision of creating a global K-pop platform come true, but I need your support as the only merit or leverage I have on these labels and artists is you guys, the global K-pop community. If you have a content idea that you think would be great for the global audience, then please share with us and if you have like an artist that you would like to see come out in the English content, then send them a DM about my channel and you know, like, if there's a fellow K-Hip-Hop fan who doesn't know about my channel, then please let them know. That's really what I need the most from you guys, and as I've mentioned in my other videos, let's grow this together, guys. It's us who can make K-Hip-Hop the next new global wave. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on my journey in Korea, so stay tuned and keep grinding, guys. Peace.